Good morning, modern standards. It's a nice, brisk nine degrees out this morning. It's supposed to get up to 40 degrees today, guys. It's gonna be nice and warm. The sap and the maple trees should start flowing. So hopefully in the next video, we'll be boiling some sap and making maple syrup. So exciting. Good morning, girls. Did you enjoy the chilly night? Supposed to be a warm one today, girls. 40 degrees. What do you think, Blossom? She says, I'm having breakfast. Well, we can talk after breakfast. Is that good there, Buttercup? Enjoy your breakfast. What are you doing? We did a phone interview a couple of weeks ago with Wired.com and that article came out the other day. So I'll put a link to that article in the description down below. The community was dubbed the goat birthing, tomato fermenting, homesteaders of YouTube. Come on, Pluto, we gotta go in and get some chicken feed. Come on. Let's go. Come on. I wanna show you how good our tomato plants are doing. The ones under the LED grow light, I think are doing a little bit better than the ones under the fluorescent grow light. Our peppers are sprouted, they're doing good. The lettuce, it's starting to come into it. So let's say, we'll say, on average, they're two and a half inches tall. And these guys, the highest ones I'm seeing are not even two inches tall. So we have a half an inch plus of height on these tomatoes. They're getting, these ones are getting a lot of their leaves too. And these ones are. Some of them have more leaves though. I'm liking this grow light. Today is the last and final day of the Heritage Cooking Crash Course. I guess it's kind of a bonus day. Jill is gonna be premiering the whole series for free today. So you get all of the modules you can watch today. Awesome. So if you guys haven't had a chance to watch any of the video series, I'll put a link in the description down below so you can sign up for that. And I know she's doing an awesome giveaway. I can't remember quite what it is, but and if, you're, if you've already watched the series, it gives you a chance to go back and re-watch the ones that you like the most. Good morning, guys. Moose, how we doing? <laughs> We've been getting a lot of questions lately about our tiny bantam rooster, Moose, and why we named him Moose. Oh, my brother came up this past summer when he came up, he brought moose. <laughs> One of his neighbors found him in his backyard and they couldn't have a rooster. So I was like, oh, I'm going to New Hampshire. I'll bring him up for my brother. So when he came into the house, he's all smiling and grinning. I'm like, what are you up to? He laughs, he brought the rooster. So his name, Moose, is from the lady whose yacht it came into. She has a restaurant back in Massachusetts and the name of the restaurant has something to do with Moose in the title. So we named him Moose. We thought it was kind of fitting since he was coming to New Hampshire and we're known for our Moose. He might be tiny, but he's got the personality the size of a Moose. Right, Moose? Oh, that's 
Thank you, ladies. Two fresh eggs this morning. I'm really hoping today we can get the raptors on the pastured pig mobile, the strapping, and then get the, it's not tin, but it's a plastic roofing material on there and have the roof all done. Let's see how far we can make it. This should be most of the stuff we're gonna need for a while at least. Uh, hold on, I gotta change out the bit. Let's get a couple of screws started before we put the ridge pole up. Ridge pole. One of the easiest ways to figure out layout is take your tape measure, hold it back three quarters of an inch, and then clamp it in place if you can't, and then clamp it in place if you don't have anybody to help you hold it. Now, we can go through and mark everything. That one's already marked. Then I'm gonna mark it on the top. Now we can do this. We'll have all sides marked. The 
the X is so you know what side of the line to put your two by on. So I gotta cut that to length. So I have the front marked because the spacing on this is a little bit less than 32 inches so that way this rafter will fall square with the wall if that makes sense so that way when we go to sheet the wall or put netting on it we can just go straight up it all right so let's put this up top i want to flush up my ends And if you can see, are gonna be pretty straight there with the wall. Let's flip it over one time. All right, and I'm gonna. That one's there. They do fall right on top of the other ones, which is nice. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. my ends are flushed up which they are nice I'm liking it guys I'm liking it Ah, perfect. Everything's lined up nicely. Come back over to the front. <sighs> nice. That ridge pole isn't going anywhere. So now we can stop putting our rafters on. And actually it might be easy er to pre-drill them all. Yeah, I'm going to try pre-drilling some and seeing if that makes it easier. Now, as long as everything works out the way we planned it to, this should go together pretty easy. Flush it up with our edge.
Oh, perfect. One down. We're not going to get too sauce about it yet, though. That's only one. where we're going to start getting into tight quarters. So, you know, having all my lines and layouts, I can just do this, bada boom, bada bing, and keep moving along. figure out the best plan of attack for attaching these and I'm thinking maybe that'll be good I ain't going anywhere. I like it. So pre-drilling them made it go a lot easier. So let's go ahead and finish pre-drilling the rest of the rafters. All right guys, let's see what we can get. We keep having issues with all of our video recording stuff today with this cold weather. 
Hopefully we can get some recording done. That camera doesn't want to work. My phone doesn't want to work. Everything's covered in ice. Yikes. Last four. This one will go here. This one we had to fix, but we can still use it. That in the middle. This one will go here. Nice. I ain't going nowhere. There we go. The old ladder was buried pretty good in the snowbank. See if we can get some leverage with this clamp. <sighs> oh, so close, guys. So close. We might need a bigger clamp. This will work better. There we go. All right, perfect. I'm putting this on because I'm gonna do a rainwater collection system. So I need a place to mount our gutters. If I didn't plan on doing that, I wouldn't bother with this two by. Maybe we can get these clamps to help hold up the two by four for us while we first get it secured. That's somewhat of the location we're gonna need. I just wanted to loosely hold it. Will it work? Don't touch nothing and don't walk under it. <laughs> All right. And this board, you want to work as you're going down. You want to make sure you're keeping it flushed as you go. All right, these two are way off, so I'll grab the clamp again. And I'll clamp it in position. 
boom i like it but that one didn't <laughs> all right i'm gonna have to get this one first Let's see if we can get this one oh yeah she'll come right into it i have to start the screw first there we go that's good Take the clamp off yet. Oh. Two. And this one is perfect. Nice. Our edge is nice and flush on the bottom. I like it. Ends are flushed up. <coughs> that sun feels nice, oh, that's for sure. strapped I'll make sure I got all the tools Girls ate all your hay. Did you eat all your hay? Yeah. You're looking pretty large, Willow. That's a good thing. It's a compliment because we're hoping you're pregnant. Oh, yeah. You're out. No, you're looking for goat treats, but I didn't bring any today. I didn't bring them out. I can't bring them out every time. Then you'll be spoiled. Yeah, you'll be spoiled. Oh, is he liking the snow? Yeah. Better watch out, Tanner. Figaro's hunting you. Wait, where? Oh. <laughs> Oh, 
you doing, mister? Huh? You like being able to be outside? Get over here. Florida, let's fight. Still not dripping yet. No sap yet. Maybe tomorrow. Did you see the pig house? Yeah. Wow, no. <laughs> you didn't notice that? No. <sighs> I like it. You like it? Yeah, I can put a roof on it. You don't want a roof on it? Nope. I have a hankering today for a soup loaded with veggies for some reason. So I went to the grocery store earlier and I got us carrots. Do you want to peel the carrots? Sure. Oh. Do you want your whole bag or? Uh, probably half of the bag. That's splashing me. Onion. The sauerkraut's doing good. I'm gonna stick the instant pot on saute mode. Come in here and grab some avocado oil. Good drizzle of oil going. Add a little bit of salt. Our onion. I've never cooked with frozen mushrooms before. They had them on sale at the grocery store. I figured why not try them? And they're mixed mushrooms, so it's not, they're not all the same. We'll saute them up with the onions. We'll add in some garlic and everything. We'll just have some nice flavors. Not quite sure why, but I am craving a chicken noodle soup loaded with veggies, so that's what we're making tonight. Oh yeah. After we make our bone broth in the pressure cooker, I try to save it and then I pick out the meat. But I wanted to show you that I had a lot of people asking about doing it in the, making bone broth in the instant pot. And look how brittle the bones are afterwards. <laughs> so that's telling me we're getting the good nutrients out of the bones and it's breaking it all down. So that's cooking it for an hour in the instant pot. And then we let it sit in there for an hour. And then even the bigger bones are brittle and they mush apart. The Instant Pot does just as good of a job, if not better, than doing it on the stove top or in a crock pot. It does it so much faster. That's why I really like making our bone broth in the Instant Pot. Made up a gallon of bone broth. It smells good. Give it a good stir. We'll add in our carrots and celery. I 
I added in the meat from the carcass, and then the little bit that's left over. And now I'm gonna add in a little bit of chicken that's left over that we didn't eat, that we took off the chicken the other day. I'm gonna add in the broccoli. Then after it's cooked, we're gonna add in our egg noodles, corn, and peas. It's gonna be boiling hot for a few minutes after we shut it off. That'll be plenty of time to cook up. Did you hear that noise? Huh? Did you hear that noise? Did it scare you? Still boiling. One of the nice things about adding frozen corn and other vegetables afterwards and the egg noodles is it helps cool off the soup a little bit. It is extremely hot. Today they were calling for it to get into the 40s. It never really did. While we were outside working, it was about 20 degrees and super windy. And I think that was the issue I was having. All of my cameras died at one point or another. My phone died and then my SD cards kept having issues and they weren't recording footages. They kept throwing error codes. So there's a little bit of the footage we missed out on while we were doing the rafters and the strapping. So I want to apologize for a couple of missing steps on the pastured pig mobile. I tried, but man, battling this weather sometimes gets the best of you. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Today is the last day that Jill Winger from the Prairie Homestead is premiering her free heritage cooking crash course. And then after today, she's going to be selling it. So if you want to get a chance to watch it for free, today's the day. You can watch all of the video model modules for 24 hours. And then she's doing a giveaway on raspberry plants and some different citrus trees. So that's pretty awesome. There's a link in the description down below if you want to sign up for that. And then she'll send you some emails. You can click get the emails for the links and go watch the videos. I know we've been enjoying watching the video series. So I hope you guys have a great weekend. And we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.